Alignment, or mapping the short sequence reads to the reference genome, is usually performed by software provided by the next generation sequencing manufacturer using standard built-in alignment parameters. The results of the alignment process are data that consists minimally of chromosome, the alignment location on that chromosome, the strand, and an alignment quality estimate. Any difference between the reference genome and the read may also be noted. These differences are recorded as mismatches by the alignment algorithm and may subsequently be identified as sequence variants by a variant detection algorithm. Alignment is the process by which we discover how and where the read sequences are similar to the reference sequence. An alignment is a result from this process. Specifically, an alignment is a way of lining up some or all of the characters in the read with some characters from the reference in a way that reveals how they're similar. A scoring seam is put in place to reward matches and penalize gaps and mismatches. Here I have an alignment of two short DNA sequences. As you can see, there are vertical bars called pipes indicating the matches and there are dashes to represent the gaps. Sequence alignment provides an explicit mapping between the residues of two or more sequences. Only pairwise alignments, where only two sequences are compared, will be discussed, such as sample to human reference genome. Multiple alignments involve more than two sequences and is an important topic in microbiome research. With the complete genomes available for many organisms, comparison of one sequence to the entire database of known sequences is an important discovery technique. As an aside, some researchers perform sequence alignment with the goal of inferring evolutionary relationships. Similarity is an observable quantity that might be expressed as percent identity. Homology refers to a conclusion drawn from data that two genes share a common evolutionary history. Genes either are or are not homologous. There are no degrees of homology as there are for similarity. Throughout this course, we will consider that we have two sequences, a sequence from a sample and a reference genome that we are comparing our sample to, so both are from the same organism. How can we find if our sequence is the same as or very similar to some other sequence that has already been determined? We can start by putting our sequence, which is the query sequence, next to the known sequence or the reference and count the number of bases that match. This would determine the identity of the two sequences. But the two sequences may be of different lengths and may not start in the same place, which would considerably complicate our analysis. So we must slide our query sequence along the reference and see where the best match occurs. However, the query sequence may have one or more gaps in it, which could occur if there is a genuine difference between the two or if one of the sequences is wrong. Algorithms that perform sequence comparisons need to incorporate gap penalties. Sequence similarity methods were first developed to compare amino acid sequences of two proteins to determine whether significant homology between the two proteins was present. Usually, the total number of distinct alignments is so large that it is usually of interest to identify the best alignment among them. The computer science approach is to represent an alignment as a path and to find the optimal path through the graph. One requirement is a means of assigning a quality score to each possible path or alignment. This is typically accomplished by summing the incremental contributions of each step along its route. Let's start with some of the initial approaches to alignment, most of which were first developed for protein sequencing. These serve as an important basis for modern alignment methods used in next-generation sequencing for RNA-seq assays. In 1970, Needleman and Wanch presented a very important paper on computing pairwise amino acid similarities. They outlined a method for comparing two amino acid sequences 
in a two-dimensional matrix by computing all possible frames of alignment with possible gaps. That is, the alignment assigns a score to every possible alignment, and the purpose of the algorithm is to find all possible alignments having the highest score. Therefore, Needleman and Wanch seeks a global alignment. We first need a substitution matrix M. Instead of illustrating this for proteins, I will illustrate this for DNA, so we have four nucleotide bases, A, G, C, and T, so we put the nucleotide bases in rows and columns. A very basic substitution matrix would assign the value of one to the nucleotides that match, and negative one to nucleotides that do not match. A penalty factor, which is a number subtracted for every gap made, may be assessed as a barrier for allowing a gap. In this example, we have a read and we have this possible alignment to the reference genome. Remember, this algorithm computes all possible frames of alignment with possible gaps. Let's let the gap penalty be negative five. Then the score for this specific alignment would be made by this equation. Then substituting the values from the substitution matrix, we get this, and then their sum. Different substitution matrices have been statistically constructed, which give weight to different actions appropriate to a particular scenario. Again, let's let the gap penalty be negative five. Now the score for this specific alignment would be given by the same equation, but the values translated into the equation differ, and thus the sum differs. Dynamic programming is used for sequence alignment. By dynamic programming, we mean the problem at hand is solved by breaking it into smaller subproblems. For sequence alignment, this means we compute the alignment in terms of alignments of subsequences. To find the alignment between two sequences, A and B, having the highest score, a two-dimensional grid F is allocated. In this case, I am putting the sequence for sequence A in rows and the sequence for B in columns. Note the sequences can have different lengths. Sequence A may be of length N, whereas sequence B may be of length M. We need to define our substitution matrix and we could use the straightforward approach of assigning a match of plus one, mismatches of negative one, and we could let our gap penalty be negative one. We want to find the optimal path through this two-dimensional grid that maximizes the score. The entry in row I and column J is denoted here by F sub IJ. I indexes the bases in sequence A and so goes from one to N. Likewise, J indexes the bases in sequence B and goes from one to M. By setting up our matrix in this way, we can have a zero row and zero column, which helps with our start. Our recursion relation looks like this. We are going to move in a way whereby we take the maximum of three possible movements. Either we take a diagonal step, which corresponds to a match or mismatch, and add the value in our substitution matrix. If you come over from either above or from the left, that corresponds to a gap. The formula for our recursion relation also defines our boundary conditions for the first row and column of our scoring matrix. As you can see, I have zero, negative one, negative two, and so on for the first row, and then zero, negative one, negative two, and so on for the first column. In other words, we have to define boundary conditions to initialize the recursion relation. When writing down the scoring matrices, two dots are put to the left of the sequence B and above sequence A as placeholders for the boundary conditions. The index of A is I, which is in the rows. The index for B is J, which is in the columns. For Needleman Watch, that corresponds to a gap at the beginning and end of the sequence, 
f sub i zero and f sub zero j. So zero is in the upper left corner. When filling out the scoring matrix, you move from left to right and top to bottom because that's how the terms of the recursion relation are defined. The first base, T and T, is a match. So F sub one one equals zero plus one based on our substitution matrix. Then T and G is not a match. And we would assess what direction would yield the maximum score and record it here. You can consider recording the direction of the move as that proves handy later. We proceed by completing the first row, then the second row, and so on. Once the scoring matrix is filled out, F sub NM gives the maximum score among all possible alignments we should see a path through the sequences. The traceback matrix can be used to trace the path from F sub N M back through the directions from which we came to get the alignment. The needleman Wanch algorithm is still widely used for an optimal global alignment, particularly when the quality of the global alignment is of utmost importance. However, the algorithm is expensive with respect to time and space proportional to the product of the length of the two sequences, and hence is not suitable for long sequences like the human reference genome. The needleman Wanch dynamic programming approach for sequence alignment was used, but this method did not fully implement an appropriate scheme to penalize gaps and amino acid mismatches and lacked a built-in significance test for alignments. It also did not normalize for lengths of the amino acids being aligned. This method was later improved by Sankoff in 1972 and then by Smith and Waterman in 1981. Smith-Waterman alignment is a local alignment method that finds the optimal alignment between two sequences by comparing segments of all possible lengths and optimizing a similarity measure. An alignment that spans the full extent of the input sequence is called a global alignment, such as Needleman Watch. A local alignment, like Smith-Waterman, is when sequences are paired but may be surrounded by residues that are completely unrelated. It is important to note that global methods always report the best alignment that can be achieved, even if it has no biological meaning. On the other hand, when searching for local alignments, there may be several significant alignments, so it may be a mistake to look only at the optimal one. The Smith-Waterman algorithm is computationally demanding so refinements to the Smith-Waterman algorithm include, for example, FASTP sequence alignment program, which was created by Pearson and Lipman in 1985. That compares two protein sequences and is much faster. L-Align and RDF2 are available in the FASTA package, and the latter allows searching of both protein and DNA databases and estimates statistical significance of alignments. To speed up the alignment process, one approach that can be undertaken is to split up our query sequence into smaller fragments, or words, and using these words to decide how the two sequences align best, and then computing a score for the optimal alignment, including allowance for gaps. This is the basis of FASTA. The trade-off between speed and sensitivity is controlled by the KTUP parameter, which specifies the size of a word. Increasing the value of KTUP decreases the number of background word hits. The default for protein searching is two, but for finding very distant relationships, one is recommended. The basic local alignment search tool, called BLAST, is a faster similarity search algorithm. BLAST works by finding very short matches, sigma pairs, and then extending that match outwards until the score falls below a set threshold. Each matched pair of sequences above a certain length is then stored and reported as high-scoring segment pairs, or HSPs, starting with those with the highest score. BLAST ignores short local alignments that do not have an alignment score greater than this random threshold. BLAST-N is the version of BLAST used with DNA sequences. More specifically, 
The BLAST word matching step uses a scoring system that allows for some mismatches as long as the overall alignment score between words is above an empirically determined threshold. Matches between protein sequences use an amino acid similarity matrix such as the PAM120 matrix, whereas the bases of DNA alignments are scored as a simple identity plus five or mismatch minus four. The alignment scores of maximal segment pairs from a BLAST search follow an extreme value distribution. For any given alignment, one can calculate a score representing the quality of the alignment. But an important question is whether or not this score is high enough to provide evidence of homology. In addressing this question, it is helpful to have some notion of how high of a score can be expected due purely to chance alone. You may know that according to statistical theory, the sum of a large number of independent and identically distributed, or IID, random variables converges to a Gaussian distribution. That is the normal or bell-shaped distribution. Likewise, the maximum of a large number of independent and identically distributed random variables converges to an extreme value distribution. The extreme value distribution is characterized by two parameters, k and lambda, which should be tailored for the particular alignment scoring roles and residue background frequencies. By relating an observed alignment score, s, to the expected distribution, it is possible to calculate statistical significance in the form of an e-value. From the extreme value distribution, an e-value is the expected number of high-scoring segment pairs with a score of at least s and is given by this equation, where k represents the size of the database, m is the length of the query sequence, n is the length of the aligned database sequence, and lambda represents the alignment scoring system. Of course, s is the alignment score. The number of random high scoring segment pairs with a score greater than or equal to s is described by a Poisson distribution. We can use the Poisson distribution to estimate the likelihood that a given match score would occur by chance in a search with random or unrelated query sequence against the given reference database. The probability of finding at least one such high scoring segment pair is one minus the exponentiate of the negative E value. This is the P value associated with the score S. For example, if one expects to find three high-scoring segment pairs with a score of greater than or equal to S, the probability of finding at least one is 0.95. The BLAST program reports E value rather than P value because it is easier to understand the difference between, for example, an E value of 5 and 10 than P values of 0.993 and 0.9. 99995. However, when E is less than 0 0.05, p-values and e-values are nearly identical. Again, the simple interpretation of an e-value is the number of alignments with scores at least equal to s that would be expected by chance alone. The significance of the alignment also depends on the size of the search space that was used because larger databases produce more alignments. Therefore, the important part of the output is the E-value column, which provides an estimate of the probability of each match occurring by chance. A low E-value indicates a strong match. Biologists often set an E-value cutoff of 0.05 as a significance threshold for an alignment, but the biological significance is extremely dependent on the context of the search. Because it is a heuristic method, it does not guarantee the discovery of all optimal alignments between a query sequence and a database. Classical alignment programs such as BLAST and BLAT were too slow for a huge number of reads produced by next-generation sequencing. Additionally, next-generation sequencing reads have more errors than reads from Sanger sequencing. A growing number of software packages are appearing that, in simplest terms, count co-localized sequences deter to determine expression levels, binding locations, or copy number. Specificity of alignment in large complex genomes, such as the human, were initially hindered by the short length of the next generation reads, 
but this has become less of an issue as read lengths have increased. The alignment of millions of short nucleotide reads to a large reference genome is computationally intensive, time-consuming, and critical step for many next-generation sequencing projects, such as identifying sequence variants of individuals or me measuring gene expression by RNA-seq. More recently developed alignment programs include ELAND, which is the proprietary alignment tool from Illumina. Others include MAC, which uses an alignment algorithm similar to e ELAND to find the best hit. SOAP, which uses seed and hash lookup tables for binary representation of query and reference genomes. Bowtie and BWA both use Burroughs-Wheeler transform to compress the query and reference genome and then MAC. All of these use an efficient error-tolerant indexing of the reference genome. MAC is a program that rapidly aligns short reads to the reference genome and accurately infers variants, including SNPs and short indels. MAC uses an algorithm similar to ELAN to find the best hit. At the alignment stage, MAC first searches for the ungapped match with the lowest mismatch score defined as the sum of qualities at mismatching bases. To speed up the alignment, MAC only considers positions that have two or fewer matches in the first 28 base pairs. Th those are default parameters. MAC then maps a read to a position that minimizes the sum of the quality values of mismatch bases. Sequences that fail to reach a mismatch score threshold but whose mate pair is mapped are search with a Smith-Waterman gapped alignment algorithm in the regions defined by the mate pair. To evaluate the reliability of alignments, MAC assigns each individual alignment a Fred scaled quality score capped at 99, which measures the probability that the true alignment is not the one found by MAC. MAC always reports a single alignment and if a read can be aligned equally well to multiple positions, MAC will randomly pick one position and give it a map quality of zero. Because their mapping score is set to zero, reads that are mapped equally well to multiple positions will not contribute to variant calling. However, they do give information on copy number and repetitive sequences and on the fraction of reads that can be aligned to the genome and can easily be filtered out for downstream analysis if desired. Mapping quality scores and mapping all reads that match the genome, even if repetitive, are where MAC differs from most other alignment programs. Bowtie, BWA, and SAM tools are more powerful tools that have largely replaced MAC for alignment of short next generation sequencing reads to a reference genome and detection of single nucleotide variants. Both Bowtie and BWA store a Burroughs-Wheeler transform of the genome, and a Burroughs-Wheeler transform of the reads is performed. A Burroughs-Wheeler transform is a way to rearrange character strings into runs of similar characters as a means of performing compression. That is, it is easy to compress a string that has runs of repeated characters. This economical data structure for storing the reference genome sequence also allows it to be searched more rapidly. What is helpful is that this compression is reversible without needing to store any additional data. Therefore, the Burroughs-Wheeler transform is simply indexing the reference genome using a technique borrowed from data compression. Bowtie takes a bowtie index and a set of sequencing reads and outputs a set of alignments in SAM format. Reads are aligned character by character from right to left against the transform string. With each new character, the algorithm updates an interval in the transform string. This is much faster than MAC, and the storage is very efficient. Bowtie can be run from the command line. Arguments include the genome, FASTQ file, and output file. As mentioned, Bowtie outputs a SAM file, short for Sequence Alignment Map file. A SAM file is used to store sequence reads aligned to a reference genome using a complicated format. Specifically, the SAM format contains an optional header and aligned with 11 mandatory fields that provide the sequence reads, quality, 
position on the reference genome, and differences between the read and the reference, or single nucleotide variants, defined in shorthand code called a cigar. BAM files are binary versions of SAM files that consist of index, block compressed, SAM data constructed so that the index can provide fast direct access to any part of the file. This format is ideal for many display tasks, particularly using the UCSC genome browser, because only the data needed for the display of the currently selected genomic interval needs to be uploaded, resulting in a significant decrease in display speed. Therefore, usually we convert a SAM to a BAM file to save storage space. We can convert a SAM file to a BAM file using a program called SAM Tools. SAM Tools provides software to interconvert between data formats. BAM files can be read into R using the R SAM Tools package if they have been sorted and indexed.